Welcome to this upper body mobility routine. We're doing controlled articular rotations, so we're really isolating every joint and we'll move them for their full range of motion. We'll start off with the wrist, so bend your arms at the elbow with both palms facing up as if you are carrying two plates of your favorite food. Now, we rotate both hands in, so pinky towards the midline, but I don't want you to drop your foot on the floor, right? We'll extend them down as if we were drawing a little half circle with our fingertips. From there, we rotate them back up all the way into wrist flexion, so palms facing you. So in short, we'll rotate in into internal rotation, extend down into extension, rotate out into external rotation, and then flex back up into wrist flexion. Let's change directions here. So instead of rotating in, we'll rotate the wrists out away from the midline. Don't worry, there's not much range of motion here. Don't be concerned. We'll go down into extension, then rotating them back in, coming all the way up into flexion. Feel free to shake out your hands at any point if you need to, and then go out, down, in, and up. Similar to before for our elbow cars, we'll work on both sides at the same time and due to the nature of the joint, we really only have four movements here as well. So make sure to keep your arms bent and nice and close to the body. Start off by turning both thumbs in into internal rotation, so palms facing the floor. Drive your forearms up as much as possible into flexion until they hit your biceps. Then turn the thumbs back out into external rotation and extend the arms back down into extension. Or in short, in, up, out, down. We really want to avoid any shoulder movement here, so make sure you keep those elbows tucked. Before we change directions, I want you to pay attention to your posture. Keep a neutral stance and slightly tuck your tailbone under. As we've reversed the movement, we'll go out, up, in, down. So turn both thumbs out into external rotation, elbows tucked, and then drive your forearms up into flexion until you hit that biceps. Then turn the thumbs back in into internal rotation and extend those arms back down. Moving on to shoulders, pick a working side from here and turn your hand and thumb out, so palm facing forward. With your other arm, create tension down by making a fist and pulling your shoulders away from your ears. Start by driving the working arm across the body over your midline into adduction and bring it all the way up, tall through the fingers into shoulder flexion, thumb still turned out. Almost like drawing a circle again. Once your arm is up and you reach back, you will likely hit a limit. From there, I want you to turn the thumb inwards into internal rotation because that will create space to further reach back into extension while coming down to the side. Make sure to keep that thumb turned in as we reverse the rep. So arm behind the body into extension, reaching as far back as we can. As you hit the limit, turn your thumb out into external rotation of the shoulder. This will again make space for your arm to go back up into abduction and then into shoulder flexion. Keep fighting for more external rotation as you come back down over the midline close to your body into our starting position. Let's switch sides here and don't worry too much about pace yet. I really want you to focus on quality reps and getting the technique right. So make sure you follow the course of my voice and not just the visuals on screen. Create tension through the body with your non-working side and on your working side, turn your thumb out, drive the arm across the midline, all the way up, overhead, reaching back as far as you can. And once again, you hit that limit you want to turn the thumb in. Let's create some more space for that arm to come down to the side. Thumb still turned in, we'll reverse the wrap. So reach back as far as you can until you hit that limit. From there, turn your thumb out to create more space and then slowly lift the arm all the way up. While you lift, you want to keep fighting for more external rotation before you slowly come back down into starting position. You'll have time to do one more rep on this side and while you do, let me remind you to keep breathing with intention. We'll improve our mobility by priming our nervous system. So basically through our breath, we can tell our nervous system that certain ranges of motions are safe for us to access. 
Let's move on to scapular calves. Extend your arms out in front and keep those elbows locked and in place. And as we did before with those shoulder calves, I want you to breathe in and create tension throughout the body. We'll start off with protraction, so round those scapulas forward or away from each other. From here we drive up into elevation, then all the way back into retraction. Think of squeezing a pencil in between your shoulder blades. Lastly, we lower them down into scapular depression. That means, in short, we go forward, up, back, down. For any of these movements, you don't want your shoulders to take over. You don't want to round them forward or pull them up. Get ready to change directions and focus on moving from your scapulas only. So now we'll go back, up, forward and then down. So back squeezing the shoulder blades together, up while keeping the shoulders down, forward so the shoulder blades glide away from each other and then down into scapular depression. As you get the hang of the movement, I want you to check in with your posture as well. So remember to tuck your pelvis under, keep a neutral spine and keep those arms extended and up in front of the body. Next up, we got neck calves. Stand up tall for me here, pull your shoulders down intentionally and create tension throughout the body with your fists pulling down as well. Pull your chin down towards your chest into flexion. Tilt your head to the side into lateral flexion and then start drawing the biggest possible circle with the tip of your chin. Go all the way over your shoulder, so rotate up and then come back down to center. On that next rep, I want you to lengthen all the way through the neck into that extension. Stay tall and feel the stretch in the tissue at the front. Slowly get ready to change directions and again start drawing that big circle with the tip of your chin. Make sure you drop those shoulders down to create more space while taking long, deep continuous breaths. In short, you would flex down, side bend, rotate up, extend up, side bend down, back into starting position. For our thoracic spine cast, I would like you to kneel down. So sit on your heels if you can, because it really does help keeping the hips locked. So it prevents them from moving, but it also prevents you from overarching your back. Now cross your arms in front of your body and place your hands on your shoulders. From here, draw your elbows down towards your hips into flexion, then lean to either side of the body into lateral flexion. Rotate up by bringing your elbows to the side of your body and then slowly all the way up. Similar to the last exercise, think of this as drawing a big circle with your elbows. Once you're in full extension, so leaning back and elbows up, rotate to the other side until you run out of space and from there you side bend back down into flexion. Let's change directions, shall we? In short, remember, bend down into flexion, side bend into lateral flexion, rotate, so draw a line with your elbows to one side. And from there, go up into extension. Bring those elbows nice and high. Once we're up, we move through rotation. So elbows to the side until you can't rotate any further. Finally, bring them back down into flexion. For the last exercise, come down on all fours, place your hands on the mat on top of each other, as if they were forming a triangle between your hands and elbows. We want to create a little resting space for our head here to help lock our thoracic spine. With your knees placed under your hips, try to round your lower back without moving your upper back, so round it up into flexion. If we round it up, we also gotta bring it back down, so arch your lower back into extension. Almost as if you tried pulling your belly button through your legs. Round up and then arch back down. You can either stay here and explore or build on top of that as follows. Once arched, pull your left hip towards your left shoulder and then round your back up. Now pull your right shoulder towards your hip and then arch back down. Feel free to change directions on your own terms, but we'll keep it here for now. Pull your right hip to your right shoulder, then round back up, pull your left shoulder towards your left hip and then arch back down. The most important thing here really is just to keep that thoracic spine locked and if you struggle to create the movement, I recommend you use a mirror and maybe even guide with your hands if needed. 
Thank you so much for joining. Come back to this whenever you need it. And as always, I'll have a no talking version of this exact routine on the channel as well. So feel free to pick and choose whatever you prefer.